Thank you so much for accepting the invitation to talk today, discuss the story of your book, this um, very special publication, which has been one of our bestsellers here at Jovis, the publisher. Why is it so special? Of course, the focus, the approach that you have in this book, and uh, last but not least, also the term vegetarian architecture that you have coined. And let me maybe just start by that. Uh, how did you come up with the term and what does it encompass? Well, you know, I'm not very good at titles, uh, but this time I, I think I, I, I striked uh, uh, a bit because, uh, of course, this is a, 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 a metaphor. Uh, uh, you don't eat uh, uh, buildings uh, and uh, buildings don't eat you, possibly. So uh, there's no way to, to uh, really uh, seriously call a vegetarian a, 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 a book or an architecture. But what I wanted to, uh, to involve you, to suggest in some way, is that uh, there are um, fields like uh, agriculture, like diet, which are uh, quite clear when it comes to uh, defining what's healthy, what's healthy for you, and what th what's healthy for the environment. Uh, take uh, organic agriculture. It's something that it is supposed to be um, uh, respectful, uh, both towards the soil mm -hmm. and environment at large, and you as uh, a person who will eat what's produced out of organic agriculture. Uh, and it's quite clear. I mean, uh, as everything, uh, it, it is appropriated. It becomes just a label to stamp on a package and to help selling something. Mm -hmm. So there is some greenwash here as well. But it's quite clear anyway. Um, we don't have such a clear approach to, archi uh, to architecture. And uh, since I wanted to um, establish a clear connection between uh, ecological architecture and natural materials, I found that using this phrase I, I doubt uh, vegetarian architecture would have helped. Of course, this is also to catch the attention of, of uh, the, the, the possible reader, but um, I strongly believe there is something, uh, uh, something uh, useful here in the fact uh, just to give you an example, that, you, that we need to, to be committed and we need to be aware. I'm not going to a, 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 a bio lad and to, to a, 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 an organic food shop and uh, picking whatever I find. Uh, I want to know the stories behind. And I, I, I definitely prefer to go to a farmer's market in order to look into the eyes of the farmer. This is much more important to me than a label. And do you think this is uh, applicable to architecture? What Definitely about the so. authorship of the designer, um, the architect, the planner? What would the role then be? Uh, I'm not saying that uh, authors, architects and planners uh, should not be there, of course. Uh, mm. My book shows examples uh, that are signed by professionals. Most of them are, not mm -hmm. all of them, but most of, of them are. Um, but yes, I, I agree. Uh, we have given too much importance uh, to authors, to authorship, 
while we need to be aware uh, that uh, a, if you you conceive uh, architecture and uh, a built environment as spatial agency, as uh, as Jeremy Till puts it, um, then it, it becomes very clear that it is not only one player who is the agent, uh, the, mm -hmm. the designer, however you call it. Um, and uh, passive uh, subjects. Uh, there are many, many uh, players. Uh, the architect is just one. He or she can be very important, but uh, definitely this is not the only figure uh, uh, at stake. Mm -hmm. And I, I strongly advocate for uh, clients or inhabitants to take a much more uh, active role and much more um, aware role. Uh, they are not supposed to be just consumers or 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 uh, uh, or users of of buildings. They should take a, a much more active role. So it does imply a change of behavior also in the users of uh, such a type of architecture. Well, I think so. Um, uh, to 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 begin with. These people, uh, as, as clients, should pose very clear questions. As it happens, uh, in all of the buildings I have been uh, investigating in the book, it all started with very uh, responsible, very committed uh, clients. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to, to live in a healthy house. They wanted to avoid toxic material and so on. Um, and, and, and then, of course, once you live in a built environment, in a, in a house, in, a, in, a, in an office building, whatever it is, um, you can't just uh, be contented with the fact that oh, it is a very low energy uh, building. So I can drive my car. Uh, I can commute 100 kilometers every, every day. Or uh, my energy consumption is so low that I can afford uh, a, 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 a holiday every winter in the Caribbean. The user is actually the trigger of, uh, such, um, of such approach to architecture, um, the one that initiates. Do you think there are enough uh, materials and technologies on the market to support <coughs> such an initiative? Absolutely, yes. I mean... Um, if you take Europe or Japan, uh, which are the two areas I've been uh, covering in the book, uh, most of the buildings are already with us. Mm -hmm. We don't need to build so much. I mean, so many new buildings. The point at stake is uh, to be able to upgrade, to, to, to retrofit uh, the existing stock. So if you, if you uh, think of it uh, uh, in, in these terms, uh, the capacity of our uh, countries, of our uh, uh, continent uh, to, to produce uh, vegetal material sustainably, which can be used for insulation, for instance, is enough. The case studies uh, in your book rather refer to small-scale interventions. Yeah. Um, is that the scale that you, let's say, promote? Or do you think it's um, um, the vegetarian approach to architecture can be extrapolated to larger um, structures? Well, I think this is a flaw in, in my book because uh, I didn't want to imply that this kind of approach uh, can be applied only to, uh, to 
uh, single family houses mm -hmm. uh, or such uh, buildings. And in fact, there are a few larger buildings, among which a, a residential community in Darmstadt and a, a, a university building or a training uh, a university in Wales. These are quite large. Yes. Um, so uh, what I think is that um, it is absolutely possible to, uh, to apply, to take such an approach uh, 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 up to medium-sized uh, buildings, uh, which are uh, possibly the most efficient uh, in terms of energy use. I'm not claiming that this is um, easily uh, 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 applicable to, to large-scale buildings. But uh, I, I'm not one uh, who thinks that uh, one single approach, even my favorite one, should be the only one. What I also think is, do we really need very huge buildings? In, in, in many cases, uh, they're uh, not viable as a solution. Think now. Uh, right now, we are suggested to avoid the use of elevators because of you know, social distances. Uh, yes. And how can you make use of a skyscraper without uh, using elevators? I agree with you on that point, definitely, that um, there's no holistic approach that will resolve the whole um, urban and rural environment with just one um, idea. What I found very interesting, uh, coming back to the case studies, you have an assessment on the environmental impact. Uh, so I think this is a very interesting point that I would like to ask you about. What were the conclusions of this uh, assessment? Well, um, this was my possibly um, most important contribution in terms of uh, scientific research. And I would uh, really want to uh, proceed with this kind of uh, investigation. Um, at the moment, um, I have a couple of conclusions to give you. One is about the databases and the methodologies used for assessing um, the environmental impact based on embodied energy, embodied carbon and, and the like. And here we have a problem, a serious problem, because um, uh, most databases, Ökobau that included, uh, which is possibly the most trustable uh, uh, available in, in Europe at the moment, uh, do not cover very well uh, uh, the, the, the real values uh, attached to natural materials. In some cases, it is very obvious that uh, making use of their uh, 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 values uh, lends to a, a certain overestimation of the impacts. So um, we we would need to implement those databases with data which are proper to uh, 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 natural materials. Uh, uh, we have we also have a problem with reference values because um, just a few. Um, comparative studies have been uh, uh, conducted at the European level and uh, those which are usually given as reference values for uh, embodied energy or embodied carbon per square meter are possibly underestimated because those calculations were made on the basis of poorly detailed inventories. On the other hand, to, to, to move to my own findings, uh, I mean, uh, the case studies we, we, we have uh, been investigating, um, I think 
that um, we must be very clear in spite of the obvious commitment of both clients and architects, uh, the results of the obtained in terms of energy, uh, embodied energy, embodied carbon, are not so low, uh, and they are extremely low just in a few cases. Which are those cases? Either uh, vernacular uh, uh, buildings, mm -hmm. uh, one from Romania, uh, one from Japan, for instance. These have a very, an extremely low embodied energy. Mm -hmm. Or uh, buildings which were kind of self-built uh, out of a sheer commitment to reducing the amount of industrial processed materials and which with a large use of reclaimed materials. So we must be very honest here. If we uh, aim at reaching what uh, Danish researchers call uh, absolute sustainability threshold, Mm -hmm. then we really need to drastically reduce uh, uh, embodied energy and carbon. As a closing word to this um, very interesting debate on vegetarian architecture, um, what audience would you like to reach and motivate with your book? Well, I hope that also thanks to uh, uh, the publisher, Jovis, uh, uh, which is perfectly positioned uh, uh, um, in order to attract both a professional and a non-professional audience, I would like to uh, uh, be able to uh, attract both uh, because uh, on one side, I, I must admit that I find that the pictures in the book are very beautiful and attractive. <laughs> and the descriptions uh, of the different case studies are quite entertaining. Um, the introduction speaks about food. But on the other hand, um, I'm giving a, a precise uh, a, 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 descriptions of how the buildings are built. I'm giving uh, uh, scale drawings. You can take a rule and, and, and take measurements of all of the buildings, uh, which was not uh, to be taken for granted. I mean, usually uh, books uh, uh, just content themselves with publishing photos. And I really wanted to have uh, uh, technical drawings as well, with sections, with a complete descriptions of all of the layers which come into yes. a, 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 a wall or a roof or whatever. And as, a, as we were commenting already, I also uh, gave this uh, final chapter discussing uh, the numerical findings, the, the, uh, the quantitative results. Um, so I hope this will appeal both uh, kind of uh, audiences. I think it can reach an extremely broad audience and uh, motivate many uh, users uh, to start thinking of a vegetarian lifestyle also in their built environment. Thank you very much. Thank you.